Hello, and welcome to Bonneville Dam. Today, we're going to learn about how hydropower is made. Bonneville Dam supplies electricity to 900,000 homes, about the size of the city of Seattle, all with the power of the Columbia River. Best of all, it produces zero pollution. Did you know that electrical currents can be used to produce motion, sound, heat, and light? But how can we turn this into this? Let's see how it all works, starting with how we use the energy from the river. We start our journey here on the fourth largest river in the United States, the Columbia River. It may not look like it, but this waterway packs a real punch about one and a half million gallons of water pass by every second. That's enough to fill 35,000 bathtubs. Combined with the volume of water and increased speed as it falls, this makes the river a perfect source of renewable energy for dams. The Columbia River begins at higher elevations and gradually flows downhill until it reaches the Pacific Ocean. This is important because when the water flows downward, it has potential energy. Potential energy is like the energy that a roller coaster at the top of a track might have. It is the energy that an object has because of the position of that object. At any second, that roller coaster could come speeding down the track. The fast current of water also means it has kinetic energy because it is moving. Kinetic energy is the energy an object has when it is actually moving. When a roller coaster is speeding along the track, it is producing kinetic energy. Let's go see how the dam can transfer the river's energy into electricity. What is this massive machine behind me? A propeller? A fan? Actually, it's called a turbine. Turbines are part of the generators we use inside the dam to produce electricity. I'll explain more about the generators shortly. So as water enters the dam, it falls like a waterfall onto these huge turbines. Do you remember what kinds of energy the river has? Potential energy and kinetic energy. Now as water falls on the turbine blades, they start spinning around. This is what we call mechanical energy the energy an object has because of its motion and position. Think about wind blowing on this pinwheel. It's moving and creating energy because of the position of the wind blowing on it and the motion it makes. So now we've seen how that potential and kinetic energy of the river are transferred into mechanical energy in the turbine. Let's go look and see how that energy transforms into yet another kind of energy the kind that runs your lights, that is electrical. We can't see the turbines from here. They're just below us, but they're connected to this long metal rod behind me called the shaft. As the turbines spin from the water falling on them, this shaft spins too. The movement of the shaft gets the next part of the generator spinning. Let's go check it out. I'm standing on top of one of the dam's generators, which make electricity. Inside this generator is a ring of copper coils called stators. Copper's a great metal to use for stator coils because it's a good conductor, meaning electric current can move through copper atoms easily. In the middle of the generator, there's a big rotating disc called a rotor. Each rotor has very strong magnets on it and these are rotating very close to the copper coils without touching them. These magnets are spinning at about 90 miles per hour. That's faster than a cheetah can run. The motion of the magnets causes the copper atoms to become excited, and electrons, which are too small to see, move through the copper coils, creating what we call electric current. Isn't it amazing that the magnets and copper coils affect one another without even touching? Items you may have at home that also use magnets and copper wires that don't touch one another include headphones, 
electric toothbrush chargers, and doorbells. Now let's see where all that electricity goes. These large machines behind me are called transformers. The ones here are called step up transformers because they take the electricity from the powerhouse and increase its voltage to 230,000 volts, about the same as 300 shocks from an electric eel. This helps prevent the energy made at the dam from being lost as it's transferred to cities and neighborhoods. The electricity we make at Bonneville and other dams on the Columbia River can travel all over the Pacific Northwest. Before it can be used in buildings like schools, hospitals, homes, and more, the electricity must be stepped down to 120 volts through one of these step-down transformers. The electricity in your home is safe for appliances at 120 volts. But what do you think would happen if we sent 230,000 volts of electricity into a house? That's right, it wouldn't work, which is why we need to bring down the energy to make it safer. Then at last, the electricity is ready to use. What's your favorite way to use electricity? Even though hydropower doesn't pollute, it's still important to conserve or save electricity. That way, there will be less demand for energy sources that do pollute, like coal and gas. We're so happy you joined us today at the historic Bonneville Dam to learn about how we make electricity in the powerhouse. We learned how we turn the energy and power of the river into electricity we can use. If you'd like to learn more about Bonneville Dam, please check out our other videos on salmon, history, and more on our website. And of course, please come visit if you get the chance.